I've often wondered how December got its name, so I did a little research. It comes from the Latin word decem, meaning 10, because this had been the 10th month of an early Roman calendar. Fortunately for us, the times have changed and it is the 12th month on our calendar year, which marks the coming of winter. Here in the Caribbean, we don't experience winter, so our focus is really on the Christmas season. The decorations, the trees, the food, the festivities, a time for giving back and spending time with family and friends. Happy December, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry. This week on Get the Facts, we'll be focusing on the government thrust to get more household workers contributing to the National Insurance Scheme, NIS. Find out more next. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. The government over the years has been encouraging more persons to become contributors of the National Insurance Scheme, the NIS. This is to secure an income by way of pension for when you are no longer able to work. Now, particular interest has been placed on household workers. And in this first segment of the program, we will speak with President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, Shirley Price. Ms. Price, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So good to have you. Yes. Let's start with, let us start with who is in this category of workers. Okay, a domestic workers is a um, person that is paid by a household, meaning person who, who is own their homes and employ somebody. It could be a cook, it could be a driver, it could be a gardener, domestic worker, caregiver, a uh, particular nurse. They are categorized as domestic workers. Right, we're trying to get these people to contribute to the NIS. Tell us, how is that going? What, is the, what, how, what, are, what are your numbers like? Well, um, it's very low. It's very low and uh, we are fighting and we are, we are um, trying to go about to educate um, the category of workers to make sure that they are contributing to the NIS. Yes, uh -huh. yes because um, in the recent pandemic, they were totally left behind because um, they weren't contributing. Why? Why is it so low? Why, why, why? Um, I think it's because of access. What do you and mean by access? Because um, domestic workers um, work long hours, and they, they, they work some work from Monday to Saturday, and they, they, they pay through a stamp card, which they have got to get the stamp at the post office. So a domestic worker should pay half, and the employer pay half, which is um, $250. Um, so, some, some, some employers go ahead and pay it and their own, but some of them split it, Domestic workers have to pay off and they pay their off. For domestic workers to go to post office, we all know that post office don't open and Saturday and Sunday, most of them, very few. And so when domestic workers leave work in the evening, Friday evening, they're already closed. And then Saturday, sometimes they come back to work or is the one day they have to do their chores with the kids and all of that. So it's kind of hard for them to reach there. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that there must be a special, special consideration for those categories of workers, such as a special window at the, the Minister of Labor where they can um, get special, special assistance, you know, so that, that even, though, even though they are at work, they can rush out and pay their NIS and go back to work. Right. And, and we are also asking the employers also to make sure that their domestic worker NIS is, is, is being paid and give them the time 
to go out and, and pay. This is the only way that domestic workers can get their pension, right. is by contributing to their NIS. And not just pension, there's a whole category of benefits right. in paying your, your, your NIS. Right. Talk to us about the benefits, a little about the benefits. Oh, there's a lot of benefits. You know, yes. as we, we have a special brochure here, NIS and domestic workers, where domestic workers will have maternity leave when paying NIS. Yes. They will have invalidity. Invalidity. Benefits. Yes, benefits, yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. Retirement, pension, mm -hmm. sports allowance, NI goal, okay. the insurance card. You have widow and widower's benefits, special child benefit, orphan benefit, funeral grant, you know, and okay. so much more. But now with the with the help of the International Labour Organization and the collaboration with the Minister of Labour, we are um, going across the island to, to have a awareness campaign and to register um, those um, categories of workers, not just domestic workers, but, but um, low-income workers. All right. You've been having some consultations with the government. What, is, what kind of feedback are you getting from your, your members? Oh, they, 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 no, they welcome the consultation and, and to know that um, the NIS um, department, you know, going to be reaching them pathway you know they're gonna they're gonna come and look for them instead of they going out to get the farms to register and all of that they're they're meeting them pathway what are some of the issues that you're discussing well well we 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 talking about about the the, the them p not paying the nis and the limitation that that they have you know who, who not paying that if if, if, if the, the domestic worker if they don't okay. hear their their nis you know the limitation for example the other day when the care when the care package was out they, um, they couldn't have, um, have any anything access to it because so. they would have to go online and put in their NIS and they didn't. If you don't have NIS to put in the in that um, form, you cannot go any further. Okay. So, you know, know that they know that and they have experienced it because this pandemic has taught them a lot. Yes. You yes, know, yes. so because of that, you know, you know, once bitten, twice shy. What would you like to say to the members of your group? I would like to say to not just domestic workers, but, but the low-income workers, to go out and register, register for the NIS pension. Because if you don't do that, you will be left behind. It is on you. The forms are at the Minister of Labour office, 18 Ripon Road, and they are also at the Jamaica Household Workers Union office, 4 Ellis May Road in Afri Tree. Call us. Our numbers, uh, number is um, 906-2849. That's 906-2849. We have forms there. We will help you to fill the form out so you can start the process. We take a quick break at this point and thank Ms. Shirley Price, President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, for sharing in today's program. We continue the conversation with Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Portia Magnus. Please stay with us. In terms of making shopping safe, shop online and when shopping in stores, stay six feet apart from others and make sure you're wearing your mask and make sure you check yourself for symptoms before leaving home. So if you're ill, please stay home and don't go out shopping at this point in time. For persons who we know are more vulnerable and at high risk, shop early or ask someone to pick up items for you in the store. Use curbside pickup and delivery options if that is available and feasible for you. For businesses, we know you expect increased pedestrian traffic. Make sure your hand sanitization station is accessible, easily accessible, especially immediately on entry to your business. Make sure you're enforcing physical distancing, not only within the business space itself, but outside. Offer online and telephone services as much as possible for as many services as possible within your business. Offer delivery services if that is an option. 
have options for short interactions to be expedited and make sure you have reminders of the infection prevention and control measures within your business so that you can remind your clients of what is expected. Welcome back to Get the Facts. Today's discussion is about getting more members of the household worker group to participate in the National Insurance Scheme, the NIS, to secure their retirement pension and other benefits. A conversation continues with Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Ms. Portia Magnus. Ms. Magnus, welcome to the program. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. Good. Now, what is the Ministry of Labor doing to increase the percentage, 3% of the group of the household workers who are registered and, and are participating, right? Tell me, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing to increase that number? Well, right now, we'll be ramping up our efforts. So before, what we would do is, is just the, the normal, where we go out and we do presentations and we participate in different events. But now we're going to be, what should I say? be ramping it up, as I said before, yes, yes. by going into the media. So we'll be placing ads in the media, the, the the newspaper, radio, TV, as well as taking our services into the communities, working along with the Jamaica Household Workers Union to 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 get to take the services right. to these workers. So you can get per persons registered. So we can get persons, persons registered, registered in the first instance and also contributing. Yes. And also to get the information out. It's important that persons, all workers in fact, are aware of all the benefits yes. that are available. And so for this group of workers in particular, we need them to know of the benefits that are available and what they stand to lose if they don't register and begin to contribute and okay. contribute consistently. What's the process like, the registration process? It's very simple. Yes. Uh -huh. um, we do have an application form which basically collects your contact information, stuff such as your, your name and your date of birth, very important, just one and a half pages. And it also requires your a valid ID and a document showing proof of birth. And that's it in a nutshell. And from that registration, you are given a NIS number which is unique to you and it follows you throughout your work life right. so even if you change employer even if you move from being employed to someone and you begin to open your own business you know um, then that number stays with you so we have your contributions tracking throughout your working life right after registration what after registration, then contributions. Yes. Tell me about the contribution. Who pays the contribution? Well, based on our legislation, the National Insurance Act, how it is set up, the domestic worker is an employee in one sense. So because you do have different types of domestic workers. So where you are employed by someone, then the requirement is 50% by the employer and 50% by the employee. In the case of the domestic worker, in Jamaica, what we have observed though, it's, it's one of two cases. It's either the employer pays the full amount because it is so small, or the worker, him or herself, does the contributions on their own. Right. How do we go about making the contributions? Uh, where do they go to get contributions to, to done? All right, very simply, it is that you, once you register and you would have indicated that you are a domestic worker, we, we, have a, we have an antiquated method of contributing, which we intend to change in the near future. So you are issued with a stamp card and the contributions come in when you go to the post office and you purchase the special NIS stamps. Then you affix the stamps to the stamp card at the end of the calendar year. Then you return it to the NIS office and we actually enter the value of your contributions using the value of the stamps onto our system. So it's accredited to you. We really have to fix that system. Yes, right? we do. Are we, are we getting there anytime yes, soon? Yes, yes, the technology. Yes. So yes. in fact, two days ago, we did have a meeting at work with our MIS team. And one of the areas that we will be focusing on in the near future, beginning next year, is changing registration to automate that service. Right. So that's the first thing. But we should encourage persons who are employing um, domestic, domestic workers, workers yes. to really help them to, p to make this contribution. Yes, so yes. our employers should be 
requesting or are, are certainly requiring their employee because it's, it's still a, it is a job yes. um, to register with the NIS, give your workers the time to go to the office and register. And if yes. they can't go to the office, then call the Jamaica Household Workers Union and yes. they will make the arrangements. And we will work along with the yes. team at the Jamaica Household Workers Union as well to get you the forms yes. and to have you registered. But you don't, you don't have to go to the offices very often. You can pick up your, your supply of stamps. You can read that the choice is yours. Yes. So if you wish, you can go once for the once per per month. You can go to the post office two months. So the choice is really yeah. yours because you have an entire year. Mm -hmm. It will be easier though. It's two hundred and fifty dollars per week. So let's say you are paid weekly. Do you want to go to the post office and purchase a thousand dollars? Yes. Which then would be the for the four. Yes. The four weeks, you know. So yes. the choice is yours. It's so you won't have to get up and go every single week. I no, mean, not if at you all. can afford to do that. Not at and all. And the employer can actually pick up the stamps, can't they? Yes, they can. Yes. Anybody can purchase. Right, right. Anyone. All right. Talk mm. to us about the consultation between the worker group. Now, how is it going? What? Wonderful. So we had a lovely session on Saturday that was facilitated by the, the child labor section within the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And that was at the Jamaica Conference Center. And the goal was really to share information, all the benefits on the NI, that the NIS has to offer to domestic mm -hmm. workers, mm -hmm. as well as how easy it is to register. That spurred a lot of interest. And mm -hmm. so we saw primarily ladies, I must say there was one king among the group, one gentleman, yes. uh, primarily ladies coming to find out that they're interested in knowing how, how many contributions they have, how can they resume um, contributing because they had started contributing before and had stopped for one reason or another, as well as collect application forms for different benefits. So already you do have members who are aware of the benefits available mm -hmm. and have been taken advantage of, of the benefits. But we do need the bulk, the majority of workers mm -hmm. now to get on board and register so they won't miss out. You see, our goal at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is to have more persons with social insurance coverage and less persons on the public assistance side yes, of the yes, ministry. Yes. Good, good. All right, tell us about NIS generally for persons who, uh, why should we um, register and participate? NIS generally for persons, well, you register because you do want to ensure that you do have social insurance coverage. What do we mean by that? Yes. Well, in the whole scheme of things, we say life happens. Anything can happen during your work life. So it is if you're a domestic worker starting right there and you become pregnant, then your employer, chances are, will not be able to pay you while you're off on maternity leave and also engage someone else. This is where NIS kicks in, where we do provide a maternity allowance only for domestic workers only, very no good. other category very of worker. Good, but well, you good. could also start working and you get injured on the job. Yes. So we do have an employment injury benefit. If you develop a disability, we have a disability pension. Mm -hmm. Now, once we say pension, it's paid for life. Um, we do also have an invalidity pension. And no, we do have so many lifestyle illnesses and mm -hmm. some of them do cause persons to be permanently what should I say, unable to work. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you can qualify for an invalidity pension. Yes. We also have survivor's benefits. So if you die and you leave a spouse, there's a pension for your spouse. If you have children younger than 18, there are benefits that can be paid mm -hmm. to the guardian of, of your child or children yes. until they're 18 years old. The most popular one is our retirement pension, and that too is paid for life. And once you qualify for any pension at all from the NIS, automatically you're given health insurance. Yes. And this yes. is comprehensive health insurance coverage. And a very popular benefit is our funeral grant. And that will help now to pay for the funeral expenses, be it for you or your spouse. And this is whether or not your spouse would have contributed to NIS. Once you contribute, then you can get that, the funeral grant to help to offset the expenses. Yes. So there are just so many benefits available. Yeah. Having a pension to look forward to gives some level of peace of mind. But you must start now so that your contribution can build up over time to allow you to retire with an income.
We hope you found the discussion useful and interesting. This has been Get the Facts. Thanks to our guest, Ms. Shirley Price, President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, and Ms. Portia Magnus, Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Enthrose Campbell. Take good care. It's the Christmas season and it's usually a time filled with lots of cake eating and wine drinking, even if for you this may be substituted by sorrel. We're kicking off the festivities early by having you learn how to make your own drink for the festive season. Check this out. For thousands of years, man has been enjoying the delights of wine, the tasty alcoholic fluid which is the byproduct of fermented sugar and forms a key component on menus during festive periods. Whether it's dry, sweet, or the sparkling variety, you can learn to make your own as an amateur fermenting for home use or a professional running a lucrative business. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA is fueling local interest by providing training in basic winemaking for persons in farming communities where there's an abundance of suitable raw materials. Today, we're in class, learning the rudiments for the amateur winemaker. This is one where we can utilize our fruits and our vegetables. You can use things like breadfruit too, but the thing is, it's nice to use a breadfruit when it's lush and ripe. You know, when, the man, when you're ready to throw it, you say plaka plaka, that is when you use it because you get a real nice flavor from it. You use the sour sap, you use everything that is there and get value from it. You, you, we talk about adding value and, and making the country go in terms of economics. That's the means. We have a lot of herbs, like our guinea hen or aloe vera and so forth. So the, the home using, doing winemaking is one means of utilizing all of those. And now that it's Christmas, if you had set your wine, say from June, July, you wouldn't have to buy some gifts because you could prepare your gifts. Wine is basically a juice that you allow to ferment. And how you work the juice is what gives you a good wine or gives you vinegar. No, there are two main, three types of wine, three types of wine. This is yeast and it is one of the main, it is the main source of your wine making. The sugar is what feeds the yeast, producing the alcohol and the CO2. When you're ready to do your thing, what you can do is um, put a little water in a container, dissolve, and then you can put this in it. And if it stays there and bubbles and starts like it's spreading, the yeast is good and well. If it, draw, if it falls to the bottom and nothing now go on, your yeast dead. So therefore you can't use it to make the wine. If you have a wine making kit available, this is, would be the ideal thing to make your wine in. Because you have an airlock here that can tell you when fermentation is happening and when it stops. This is filled with water. And when the wine is being made and the CO2 is being given off, the water in here bubbles. So automatically when no bubbles is coming up in here, you know that fermentation done. So you can pour off your thing. If you're just going the real homemade style, when you don't have the facility, all you have is a keg. So you're going to work from the books. The book says three weeks. Say you're making um, pineapple wine nice to use. It's the best sugar to use in that case would be the granulated sugar. Remember the granulated sugar is clear so you would see the yellow it would show up. If you're doing a batch of roots you're going to be sweetening with molasses and the dark sugar because when you drink your roots you want that earthy taste. The fact of the matter is when you break it up you expose more surface area so therefore, you're going to get more flavor being, being extracted. So that is why you pulverize it. After you finish everything, because the heat is a factor, you store your wine in a dark area. 
dark, cool era. Today we'll be doing a sorrel wine. It's Christmas time, yes. so we have to nice up the place. The hot water is on the soil already, and we draw it, we start the sweetening process so we can speed up things. Now, this bag here is a nice little drawstring bag. It's like a strainer. I throw the soil here, and I lower it. No, I leave the trash or in the bag and keep it in there so fermentation happens with it in the bag. The reason simple for that is the flavor at the end of the day is going to be stronger. When you use this and you have it in here, you don't go to 21 days. You go like day 19, you take out this and you get rid of it and then you close it back and on the 21 day, you get ready to throw. After it has fermented and you throw it off, you can, you, you can add some, some radiance to it so that it clears up easily. The recipe calls for four pounds of sugar. I've already added two, so I'm going to add the other two. So we're going to stir consistently to ensure that the sugar dissolves. No, it is important to remember that the sugar content affects the alcohol content of the wine. They may add too much and just get a very sickeningly sweet wine because fermentation isn't complete. Now we are going to measure our yeast to add. We need one tablespoon of yeast. This mixture is sorrel, ginger, so all of those little things you see there, that's ginger, and of course, a little, a little cinnamon and the sugar. It's important to remember, you see here, when you add your liquid, at no point it should be up here. You should leave space to facilitate circulation of the carbon dioxide. When you are setting your wine, label your things properly. Label the date that it was set, and you count off your three weeks, and label the day you're going to throw off. Then now, you are going to close off your container. Put a little tape around here, and you do your thing, and three weeks later, you throw off your wine. So we are going to decant, and please re realize I'm not saying strain, I'm saying decanting, because strain, you would get the impression that you're going to throw it to a sieve. We're not doing that, and you do it slowly. Now, you see, we're coming towards the end where you see the residue coming out, the yeast there. So you don't want that to get out, so you're going to put that down. And this, you're going to throw this away. And then now you cover this and you put it down and you can, I usually tell my ladies, um, you can throw off every week. When it's nice and clear, then you can bottle. This is where the magazine ends for today, but if you would like to see more content like this, then visit our YouTube page. We also have all the latest news and updates on our social media pages and on our website, which you can find at jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.